In this section, we're going to learn how to derive um, a function from a given table of values. So if you recall in the previous section, um, we saw an application where we were dealing with a computer manufacturer that sells um, a certain amount of computers, and that number of computers sold doubles each year. And we ended up with a table of values that looked like this. So in the first year, they sold 2 million computers. In the second year, it was 4 million. In the third year, it was 8 million. Um, in the fourth year, it was 16. In the fifth year, it was 32, um, and so on and so forth. So the number of computers sold doubled each year. So we want to take this table of values, and we want to derive a function that describes this table of values. So we can say, let's break this down. So in year one, we, they sold 2 million computers. 2 million. In year two, they sold 4 million, which this is the same as 2 times 2, so 4 million. In year three, they sold 8 million, which is the same as 2 times 2 times 2. Um, in year four, they sold 16 million, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Um, you're kind of seeing where we're getting with this. When we multiply a number by itself several times, we can use what's called exponential notation. And uh, this is actually what we call um, identifying patterns, which is very important when we get into higher mathematics. But ex exponential notation, excuse me, looks something like this. Um, we have 2 equals, we know 2 to the first power equals 2. Um, 2 to the second power is 2 times 2. 2 times 2 times 2, which is this case, excuse me, 2 times 2 times 2, which is our third year, is 2 to the third power. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 to the fourth power, and so on and so forth. So we can write a general equation for this, is that f of x, in our application here, f of x, we can say, equals 2 to the x. We see that um, since our number of computers sold each year doubles, we're simply multiplying 2 times the number of years. Here in year 4, um, our function is described as 2 to the power of 4. Um, in the second year, our function is described as 2 to the power of 2. So we can write, since x is already described, um, is defined in years, we can write our function as f of x equals 2 to the x. So what we did is we just took a table of values and we identified a pattern and came up with a function that describes that table of values. And that's what we're going to be learning to do right now. So let's look at a few more examples. Let's take a look at the following table of values. Um, let's say we have x equals and f of x equals 3, uh, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so we have the following values for x. And let's call this, let's just say, um, just so we can get a real world situation, x equals um, a number of books that someone's buying for their class. Number of books. And f of x is going to be a function of those number of books, and we're going to call this its cost. Okay, so x equals number of books bought, and f of x is the cost of those particular number of books. Let's say for three books, cost us thirty dollars. Um, this actually isn't. Um, it, it's books are way more expensive than this now, so we're just uh, keeping them small, keeping the number small. Four books cost forty dollars. Um, five books cost fifty dollars. Six books cost sixty dollars. Okay, so what we can um, take from the information given in this table, we can say that each book costs ten dollars each, because three books cost thirty dollars, four costs forty dollars, and so on and so forth. So our cost, or f of x, is going to equal ten dollars times the number of books that we're buying. So ten times x, or just ten x. Um, and you can actually check that this is indeed a valid function because if you plug in a particular value of x, let's say x equals 3, if we solve f of 3, well, we would get 
10 times 3, which is 30. And that is indeed our value for f of x when x equals 3. So we can write a function of f, f of x equals 10x for this given um, situation. All right, we're going to do a few more of these. Let's take a look at the following table of values. Let's say our variables a and b um, are as such. a equals minus 3, minus 2, uh, minus 1, 0, uh, let's just go with 1 and 2. Okay, so these are, this is our domain, this is our list of independent variables, and we want to find b. b can also be written as f of a. Okay, and these are our values for f of a. We have 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. Okay, um, well we should notice this, um, this is we're actually squaring the numbers up here to get this number. Um, minus 3 squared is 9, minus 2 squared is 4, um, and then 2 squared is 4, and so on and so forth. Anytime we square a number, we will get a non-negative number, and that's actually what we have here. So we can write our function f of a, or b, b equals f of a, we can write it uh, either one, however we're describing our variable, and we can write f of a equals a squared. Whatever input we're putting in for a, we're going to square it, and it's going to spit out this answer. So we can actually plug in a few of these and see that this is indeed true. And I'll leave that for some extra work for you. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the next one. Let's say that we have the following table of values. Um, let's go back to the traditional old x and y. y is the same as f of x. And our values for our function or for our variable x are 1, 2, I'll just say 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the the values for f of x, the corresponding values are 1, 8, 27, uh, 64, and 125. Okay, we need to learn how to identify some patterns here. And um, if you're familiar with uh, cubic roots, um, we should know that each number in the domain is cubed. Um, it's multiplied by itself three times. One cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, three cubed is just three times three times three, which gives us 27. So we can write the general formula, or the general function, f of x equals x cubed. So whatever x value we plug in here, we cube it and we get the corresponding value for f of x. Okay, so we're, we're just doing some simple examples here. Um, some that we've probably seen before, um, some that we've seen for the first time, but um, we can actually use a little intuition to find the answer. Let's say um, we have a given number of sales for our domain and we want to find um, the earnings. We're actually not going to find them, we're actually going to be given them, but we want to find the function that describes um, earnings as a function of sales. So let's say we have our domain 0, 10, 20, uh, 30, and 40. So these are the number of sales that we have, and our earnings for these amount of sales are $20, $90, $160, $200, and $300. Okay, um, this actually just isn't going to be a variable squared or nothing like that, or just multiplied by a number. Um, because you, you see if we have zero for sales, we still earn $20. Um, so this looks like we have a base wage plus commission on sales. So we're earning a wage, and we're earning some more money for each sale that we make. So we know that f of x is going to be something plus 20 because we're starting out with $20. So if we subtract 90 or 20 from 90, we get 70. So if we have $70, an extra $70 for 10 sales, um, that means we're making $7 per sale. Okay, so 20 plus 7x is going to be our function. And we can prove this by doing another one. Um, let's say we have 20 sales. 
Well, let's go ahead and subtract our base pay of $20, which leaves us 140. And 20 times 7, or 7 times x, gives us 140. So this is indeed a valid function for this table right here. All right, we're just using a little intuition. Um, and th this helps us out, knowing this is a real world situation um, of sales to earnings. Uh, it helps us out to find um, the uh, function for it. Uh, we're actually running out of time here. Let's squeeze in one more real quick. Um, let's say we have um, the table. We're going to use f and x, or just x and f of x. And let's say we have the values 0, 1, 2, 3. Those are our domain, those are our input values. And let's say our outputs, our f of x values, are 28, 25, 19, and 1. Okay, well you see that this, um, we're not just multiplying something like this, it's going to be another one, it's going to be a compound function, if you will, um, where 28 is going to be um, either added or subtracted to something. So we can start out our f of x, our function, with 28 and you can see that we're trending down here um, as X gets bigger our f of X gets smaller so we know we're going to be subtracting something and we can find that by um, well, we're, sub we're trending down here each time we're going down by a factor of 3 then a factor of 6 then a factor of 18 so something um, is being multiplied by 3 and that's going to be X so we have minus 3 to the x. And you can prove this by plugging in um, a given vari or a given value for our variable. 28 minus 3 to the 1 gives us 25. 28 minus 3 to the 2, so 28 minus 3 squared, which would be this value, gives us 19. 28 minus 3 cubed, which is 3 to 3, gives us 28 minus 27, which is just 1. So this is indeed a function for this. So we need to be able to uh, identify patterns um, in order to write a function given a table of values. So we're out of time. We'll do some more um, of writing functions in the next video. I'll see you soon.